sending them a text about the call. Um, we're pretty short today. We're only got 32 people on the call. I'm assuming some of that has to do with, uh, with me. <laughs> some of it has to do with, with uh, not getting the text out. So it uh, definitely has to do with the text bill. I really apologize. I'm not sure what's going on and what I'm going to do while you're training. I'm just going to hop back on that website and see if I can't get a text to go out right now. Yeah, it's not your fault at all. Thanks for the introduction, Keels. Congratulations on your success at the, at the regional. Thank you. I'm sure many of you on this call were at the regional, so I heard it was pretty awesome. So where was the fish tank? Was it at the, the venue that they had at the, for the awards? We were at the aquarium, and the aquarium has a conference room that's you know right outside that shark tank. So that was our our backdrop for the com or for the not for the conference. That was just for the banquet. The conference was at a a campus. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's cool. Look like a look like a uh, really good really good venue and um, a lot of good training. You guys had some. Fantastic trainers there, Nate and Dane Clark, and uh, and um, of course all the pack members that were there as well. And then I heard multiple instructors um, were there, so just a really cool venue. Um, right on. Well, thanks, Keely. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me um, out on the call. Thanks for hosting this event all the time, and thanks for the wonderful introduction. Um, yeah, I love to train. I love to um, get the opportunity to share this information. I mean, I'll never forget um, when I first got started, uh, you know, I would go to all the events, um, of course. And then, um, and then there was a point in my time when I, when, I, when I realized that I really wanted to get in front of the room and talk. So I would constantly just take notes at every single Thursday night. And some of you have heard that, but I mean, my wife one time was like, what are you possibly taking notes on? Like you go to this thing every Thursday, it's the same stuff. But I just was learning from the different instructors and I, I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, my, my brain was just excited about hearing the information and wanting to be able to share it with people someday. So, I mean, I'll never forget the first opportunity I had to talk at, at, um, at a Super Saturday and do a training. Like that was just a huge thing for me, um, you know. So I don't, I don't know for for you guys on this call. A couple things. Um, one is it's pretty, it's it's a, it's thirty five people, so it's pretty intimate. So if you want to come off a of mute, not that you can't do it any other time. Anyway, I always say this, but um, I will text in my cell phone number seven six zero five three 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 one four one. So that's my cell number. Um, if you ever need it, and want to put it in your phone, you can always reach me. Um, but you can come out on the call if there's something you want to like even role play about um, is one of the things I was thinking about today. Um, it's this call is really nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with you guys and what you want to hear about and learn about. But a lot of times um, you're here doing other things, getting ready for work, traveling to work, getting the kids to school, whatever it is you're doing. So it's hard to participate. It's just easier to listen. So that's why we always have a training ready for you. Um, and so, uh, but if, you know, if you want to come off mute, if you want to, um, you know, me to uh, talk to you about how I would respond to a text or a phone call or, or a prospect or whatever it is that you are um, interested in hearing about uh, my opinion and my experience on, I'd be feel, feel free to ask that or come off mute and, and we can talk about that. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, at any time you can interrupt. I've got a few things that, um, you know, I, I've recently been talking about um, that I think is pertinent to what we're doing. And if you're, you know, if you're, if you're running this business and you're on these calls and you're going to the meetings, um, you know, I think that, I think that those will eventually be goals of yours um, or should be uh, to some extent that you'd want to get in front of the room and train that you want to have success. You know, when you have a 10 or 20 or $30,000 a month, when you have a couple consistent months, when you get a few five stars, um, when you get five starred, whatever uh, milestones you reach, um, it gets recognized and you do get, you know, asked to train and asked to share your story and asked to um, come out on the phones and stuff like that. So that's just the beginning. And then, um, you know, from there, um, you'll move into a, a leadership role and, um, you know, the people doing the, 
doing the front of the room on that. And this isn't my training. I'm just letting you guys, I'm just setting the kind of the stage here, but the people in front of the room, it, it's an interesting progression <clears throat> and timing is everything. There's a lot of qualified people that can be in front of the room, but, um, you know, generally speaking, that person is the person that <clears throat> makes the most money and is consistent and is doing the most, um, is doing the most uh, business within that particular community. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, it's, it's just always been that way. It's always been that way from, from day one that I, that I've been around. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know, you sometimes you'll wonder why someone steps aside and it's typically because somebody else has made, started making more money on a more consistent basis on the marketing side, not the real estate, but the marketing. Anyway, um, this is the value of a 10K coach versus the possibilities of Renatus. Yeah, right? Oh, excuse me. <coughs> so, a couple things. Um, oh, yeah, what I was saying, too. I'll never forget. Um, <clears throat> man, I'll never forget the first time I, I got a chance to, to do the presentation. I can't remember why exactly, but it, was a, it ended up being a very big venue at the time we were having a college here in Arizona. So the room had nearly, um, I want to say roughly 150 people in it. And I had never done the presentation in front of anybody before, the full presentation. Um, so it was quite the experience. And back then, there was a few more slides, you guys. It was really two hours. And, uh, and I spoke for full two hours. And I was, you know, um, uh, we had a corporate um, website or a, a corporate presentation that we had to use but we got to interject our little thing a lot like we do today but um i remember talking about deals that were from people i didn't even know um but i understood the deal so so giving some examples but it was just a really cool presentation but boy i'll tell you it drained me um i was very tired <laughs> after that and uh and i was very nervous um it was incredible but anyway just a quick thought. So just look forward to it. Look forward to the opportunity to share your success with other people. And it'll help be something to motivate you. Um, you know, a couple of things I was thinking about. Um, I was talking about this Thursday night and actually Keely brought up a cool point about um, the real estate um, and, and what, you know, how I got started with Renatus. I'll tell you a little bit about some things that I think will be uh, could be really valuable to talking to other people. I was on a one-on-one -on -one last night, um, and and the gentleman was working on his um, is working on his credit. He's been bringing his credit up. He's owned a business for 15 years. Uh, he also has a W-2 job. Um, the business uh, has gotten big and then gotten small. Um, his family uh, it pays his family's salaries while he's working, so it's a decent business, and they help run it. Um, but you know, he's a sole proprietor and, um, and he actually told me a story where some, he did have, he has a cleaning business, basically a janitorial service. So listen to this, this there's going to be a point to this, <laughs> this, this stuff you can't, I think experiences are, are so valuable to training, um, instead of training in theory, that's why Bob uses practicing instructors. I think, um, actually I know. Uh, is because it just there's so much more value when you're actually doing it. So I'm having this conversation with this guy, and um, and he has a janitorial business, and he tells me the story where they had roped off a wet area, and a kid did run through the wet area, slipped and fell, uh, banged his head, and they sued him. And fortunately, I don't know, how, I'm surprised, but fortunately they got the insurance, and they didn't go after him. But he's a sole proprietor. And as you know, or if you don't know, sole proprietor has no liability protection. That means that you operate a business as a sole proprietor. You just wake up one day, you've heard this at the presentations, I'm in business for myself, billsjanitorialservices.com, whatever it was, right? And I can go to work as a sole proprietor. I can start writing off things and I now have a business. But I have no protection, I have no tax shelter, uh, things like that, right? So I start talking to him like, you know, He's like, yeah, I, I need, really need to learn about this. And then he was talking about how he's only owes 50 grand on his house. Yeah, Keely, it's insane. He got very, very lucky. And I told him, I said, I go, you know, you, if, if, if you get the right person who gets a good lawyer, uh, who's a greedy lawyer, 
um, I told him, you, you, they could sue you for everything you're worth and, and it never goes away. You can, you'd have to bankrupt it. Um, and even then, if they can prove any type of negligence, you're not going to be able to bankrupt that. And you can have criminal charges, you know, like, like there's just no protection on a sole proprietor, no matter what you're, and you wouldn't think what janitorial, why would they ever need protection, right? Liability protection. Um, you never know, uh, especially in a litigious society like we live, as you all know, right? And so um, then he tells me that he's got a $50,000 mortgage left on his house. He's been paying it down. But this guy works with one of my guys that's on my team, one of my new, um, one of my new teammates that's doing a deal with me. And he also still works. Um, but he was very excited about what he's seen. And he's just never marketed, really. He's an ICM, but he doesn't. He just was telling this guy about this and because uh, he found out the guy was interested in real estate, that the guy had gone to a guru program, that the guy had, you know, thought about a HELOC, but wasn't really sure what to do with it and didn't want to do it wrong and, and just doesn't, doesn't want to do what he does for the rest of his life. And he's, and he's approaching 50. My point is to this is that this is a gentleman that's self-taught. He read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He's read Think and Grow Rich, but he's never done a deal. Um, he's considering getting HELOC to do a deal. Um, he lives in a good market. Um, and that's, that's the majority, you guys, is that, is that people don't know. I was thinking about this this morning on my dog walk. And, um, you know, there's a couple things that, that really come to mind. Number one is, um, uh, you know, if we, if we have the ability, and I'll go into some detail on it, but if we have the ability to get somebody in front of the information, most of the time, Renatus is going to sell itself. Um, and most of the time, the people that don't enroll are people that, just, that they don't have the right mindset to get past the money. Um, it's rarely a real, a real legitimate excuse uh, for why they're not enrolling at that time. And most of the time, it's not now. It's just, um, it's just, or it's not, it's not, no, it's just not now, right? You guys know that. But I mean, there are people that, you know, that are, that are successful and, and they just really don't want to do it, right? Um, they don't want to put something else on their plate. They don't necessarily feel like it's necessary for them to, um, to uh, you know, they're making good enough money. They're already investing in real estate. They have, they've done a few deals. They have financial resources and things like that. So it only makes sense that why would they, why would they pay for that? And, and then typically, you guys, that is the, that is the, um, the, the reason for that is their lack of information. They, we have not demonstrated the value deeply enough. There are classes that we probably don't know about enough that we didn't study the wealth um, creation classes track, right? The learning path about wealth acceleration. We probably haven't studied wealth retiring in real, real estate yet. We probably haven't studied um, a few of the other classes that are really important to um, people that are farther along the financial spectrum than we are, right? So it's hard for us to have that communication with them. And so they don't see the value in Renatus um, because they're, 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 they're not there to fix and flip. They're already doing that. Or they're not there to just learn to buy an apartment complex because they already have one, right? My point is to this, is that um, most of the time, when people see Renatus, they're, they're, they're going to be um, very intrigued and want to know the more information to get, um, to get started, right? And so um, with, with this example with this guy, and I'm going to tell my story a little bit more about it so you guys can get the picture of what I'm painting here, is that, um, you know, he's self-taught. He's trying to do it on his own, and it takes time. Right, it takes a considerable, much, a much more time, um, and there's a lot lost in that time. Like we don't realize it. Like time goes slowly every day, but when we look back, it's like holy crap! Fifteen years have passed. Like this guy's owned this business for fifteen years, and um, you know, in, it given the right opportunity, he could have been retired already from his job had he run this business a different way or had some of the tax strategies in place, some of the debt strategies in place that we offer. And so um, when my conversation with him last night, um, basically doing a mini presentation over the phone with him, 
he's in another part of town. I mean, another state that uh, doesn't have a presentation and it was late. What is my phone doing? It's crazy. Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, so I did like a little mini epic over the phone and even a follow up at the same time. And, um, and anyway, what I, what I realized is that he's very self-taught and he's very open to what is possible and what he doesn't know, which is cool. So Keely mentioned um, 2008, you know, and you guys have heard my story, you know, my first year at Renatus. And I'll tell you, I was doing this at the presentation I did a week ago, um, doing the presentation Thursday night. And I, I told a little bit more detail of my story in the beginning. I just changed it up a little bit. But, um, you know, I, uh, when I, when I started to get into real estate, the, the number one thing that I did was I got, I, I, the reason I got started is because I, I witnessed people at my Played Against Sports store. I met people that on a daily basis were, were, seemed to be wealthier than I was. They were making more money, they had nicer cars, and they had more time freedom. And so back then, there was, there was the boom in California. I was living in Southern California. The boom in California was, was in 2003 and four and into 2005. And so I was witnessing that, I was experiencing that, and so were they. And they were like, wow, you've got to get into real estate, Bill. It's, it's amazing. And they didn't really say how. A lot of them said we're brokers. Some of them were investors or brokers, both. And um, I really didn't know much about real estate. I didn't know. I mean, I mean, I was 34 when I first got introduced to real estate. And, uh, and I didn't know anything about it. Like, I didn't even know there was a market. I didn't know that the market went up and down, right? Um, and so when I, when, I, when I was able to transition, fortunately, in my opinion, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful I lost play against sports, to be honest with you. Um, it, you know, I, I did realize one day that real, you know, owning four play against sports stores was not going to get me to where I wanted to go anyway, right? And it was, a, it, was a, it was a business that I ran that I was personally involved in. I did not, I did not have a leveraged business. Well, it was leveraged to some extent, but I was still working in my business. I wasn't growing it. I wasn't looking to buy commercial property and then ha own my own buildings so that I could lease them to myself. I didn't know any of that stuff, right? All I knew was get a lease. You know, I had $21,000 a month in, in three leases in Southern California. And they were triple net. It didn't even include any of my utilities and taxes and insurance and stuff. Anyway, so I started to self, right? I, I, uh, I, I saw that rich dad, I saw um, Carlton Sheets and I bought that online. And, and then I bought coaching, right? Carlton Sheets called me, or not him, but his group, they called me and, uh, and they, they sold me coaching over the phone. I was super open to it. I mean, literally they were like, hey, you should get some coaching. That's why it's not working. I'm like, okay, how much is that? It's like five grand. I literally pulled out a credit card. I was like, here you go. And it was like eight sessions for half an hour or an hour maybe. Uh, no, six sessions for an hour. And, uh, and I missed three out of the six because it was on a Wednesday night and I couldn't even do it. And, um, and then two years went by and I was finally moving to California or Arizona and I was looking to get more into real estate. And so I, um, the first thing I did was I got a job as a loan officer, right? And, and nobody as a loan officer was investing in real estate. Everybody was buying their own house, hundred percent financing. They were making a, a ton of money. And, uh, and you know, I was like, oh, and I talked to one guy and he was like, oh, I'm thinking about buying some, some uh, storage units. I was like, let's do that. You know, how are you going to do that? Right. No one really knew. And so then I got my license <clears throat> as a realtor. <clears throat> I thought maybe that would teach me. I literally, that's how ignorant I was. Like I thought that that would teach me how to do real estate. I'm going to speed this up. Um, if you fast forward, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad in 2006 when I was a loan officer. And, and it really opened my mind because I was a loan officer. And so I figured I could refinance the house that my girlfriend lived in, um, that I was living in uh, with her. And I could, um, I could go out and find us a new house. And I knew that they were state and income loans and that we could qualify for a loan. She had really good credit and had a great job, a great business. <clears throat> and, um, and I would do all the work. I would have the knowledge and the sweat equity and she would just use her credit and we could get another house and then we'd sell them both in a couple of years or refinance them or whatever the case was. Like I really didn't have an exit strategy. And, and that was, that was it. And 
um, if, if you look back, if I look back at this, uh, the, and, and it, it wasn't the crash, right, that, that did it. It was my own ignorance. I mean, it wasn't, I, 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 I don't know, people can blame whoever they want. But it wasn't the bank's fault. It wasn't. It wasn't anybody's fault but my own. I didn't know, so I took advantage of what I thought of a good situation where I could get a house, um, and uh, and and leverage it. And it would. I would be able to sell it in a couple of years or refinance it. Right. So, um, you know, as Keely mentioned, by the time, literally by the end of 2007, when I and I mean I was in now. Uh, looking in 2008 as getting educated through Renatus, I was looking at short sales and I looked at our, our house and our house was worth um, like $190,000 is probably would have been, I probably would have put in an offer for 175 on my house that I had lived in, 3,000 foot house. And in 2007, we bought it for 460 and then we put a mortgage on it for 30 grand for a pool. So it was leveraged to 490. And uh, now today it's worth about 550. It's back. We kept the house. Um, Fortunately, uh, I'll tell you, thanks to Renatus, and uh, I'm going to get to a training here in a second, you guys, I promise. So um, I hope you're getting this, what this is trying to say, is that uh, between that house and the house that I refinanced that her and I were living in before, um, we were upside down, um, not even including my bills, what I, what, the, what I had done to us financially every single month. But, the, but equity wise, we were negative equity, uh, 200, 300,000, $400,000, maybe even four, 430, because the other house had gone down so much. Um, and, and it was significant. And uh, we had a second mortgage and a third mortgage on, the, on our primary residence, the one we had just bought. One was the second was the down payment. The third one was the pool. And, um, and anyway, the, the amount of time that was lost and the amount of opportunity, right? So because I did that in 2007, um, had, had we not gotten that house, we could have paid for her mortgage on her other house was so small. She could pay for that, you know, in a week's salary of what she was making, not even. And, um, and we, were, we had so many bills because of moving into that house. The utilities were higher, 500 a month for, for air conditioning out here, 3,000 square foot, the bills went up, the, the mortgage, the insurance, plus we were negatively cash flowing the, the other property, you guys. My point to this is, is that if, when you come across folks that you're talking to and, and they think that they know what they know, right? Or they, they feel like, you know what, they can get education elsewhere, that's cheaper or free. Um, and it's true in today's market. And listen, folks, in in, Mar in Arizona, Utah, California, Seattle, Washington, you know, Chicago, even um, definitely on the East Coast, Florida, and and Georgia, the markets are moving, right? They're moving up, and they grow rapidly. And they have high Vegas, they have high appreciation rates, right? And we know this, and so. People can absolutely get lucky in a market like this. You can put something under contract. You can typically wholesale it if it's got any equity at all and it's even near, close to being a deal or you have a right buyer's list um, or you place the right ad or you, you know, whatever the case is, or you could flip it, right? You could, if you know, if you've got a little bit of margin and it's under the price point where most houses are selling, um, there, the odds of you being successful in that are pretty good. So in that regard, people don't need the education. They don't need Renatus to do a flip in a market like this under $250,000. It's just a fact. They can flip their own house, right? You could stick it on the market and put $20,000 more than you're, you bought it for and probably get it. Um, what, people, what, what people don't see is the bigger picture. And that's where we come in as marketers. And, and the education, when we watch it, will, will give you that broader knowledge that that more in-depth ability to create more value for renatus um so you know in spending some time um this is why i truly believe that in my experience in all the deals that i've done if you if you haven't done a deal or you have not done very many deals you don't need to. 
the knowledge you can get, and you will, you will eventually, but, uh, and you'll eventually do it sooner than later. But the knowledge you can gain and the and the the resources you can gain from the from the education to set yourself up for any downturn and you've heard me say this before um, is so is so more powerful when you're marketing right and studying some of the classes that perhaps you might not use right now but you can talk um, a serious game with with prospects and present some value that they haven't even thought about because you've watched these classes is is mind blowing what's potentially possible. Like if you can talk commercial real estate, multi-use boutique hotel, um, you know, starting businesses that you, you, I mean, it's just such a, it's such a, a, a more valuable conversation than a fix and flip or wholesale conversation. Um, anyway, uh, when I, when I, when I refer to like this, this one-on-one -on -one last night, um, with, with one and I'll tell you um, the conversations that I had, he was blown away by what he doesn't know and, and what he's missing out on and how long it's taken him to get to where he is, right? And so with me being self-educated, right? So take you, this, my story to your prospects, right? Here I was for two plus years getting self-educated on trying another program before, right? Reading my own books, of course, you know, I all know I can't read. Um, and then getting, becoming a loan officer, a real estate agent, getting out in the market, doing it myself, finding the house on a, on a builder closeout, right? And trying to do all these crazy things. And look where it got me. $400,000 upside down in negative equity, a negatively cash flowing property, let alone the mistakes I made, you know, financially, right? My credit was, in the sh was shot. All of these things happened. And then it, it got to the point where she couldn't qualify for a new loan all the loan programs are gone. You know, we couldn't afford something if we wanted to, uh, given our situation. So the opportunity to buy real estate in our name and her name in 2008, nine and 10, we could have killed it. Right. But I already blew it. I blew it, uh, with this big house that I had to have, right. Because I, you know, it was going to be the next best thing. So, um, it's not only, the mistakes that you made and what it costs you, but it's, it's all that time, right? It's those years that you lose trying to do this on your own. And then not only that, it's opportunity that passes you while you're in a situation that you created being self-taught. Um, I don't have a good example, but uh, anyway, moving forward, um, where was I going with that? I can't remember. <laughs> I love it. Uh, don't forget, if you've got something that's off tangent, you guys, feel free. So here's what we've got. This is what I was getting to. Uh, so you've, you've got this idea of, of, of speaking to people about the value of Renatus and, and, and understanding that in today's day and age, you have the ability, they have the ability to get, to get self-taught anywhere. Um, what's interesting is, uh, in David talking, David's pretty new in talking to, and you've all heard this and you'll probably have all applied this, but David talking to him about paying down his debt, getting a HELOC, um, just like David did, using, rolling in a self-directed retirement account um, to invest long-term in real estate when he's not even there and partner with me. All these things intrigued him because he knew he has a little time, he has retirement, he has a mortgage, he has equity in his house. So he's all these things going for him and he doesn't know how to put them all together and that he could even use them. So just the conversations that David is having, um, just the conversations that David is having uh, with this gentleman are stirring up, it, it's created the intrigue for him to wanna to have this conversation with me. Um, I looked at, so open it up to a broader scale. I was talking about this last Thursday at a training um, here in Arizona. And you know, if we think about it, um, most people absolutely that you come in contact with at some point are going to say yes to you in the fact that they want to create wealth. Right. And, um, and if we think about, if we think about people that have that opportunity, um, and, and to be, be rich, right. To be wealthy, they, um, they, they literally are either 
professional athletes, right? Movie stars, they are in some sort of high end sales job. And you've seen this before, right? CEOs of companies, you know, lawyers and doctors that have worked for years, not coming out of law school or med school, but that have worked in a, in a, in a law firm as a partner for years, right? And their salaries are, are up there. Their salaries are quarter million plus, um, you know, and they're paying 50%, 40% tax, right? And so they're trying to use a few of the tax codes that are available to them, the tax strategies that are available to them, um, such as putting some money into a, a, a rental property where they buy it retail. And, and it, like, think about it. It's a long-term boring strategy, right? They're not, they can't see or taste the wealth that they're creating through that. And so it's, it's a struggle, right? It's a struggle. There's, there's, there's very few opportunities for the majority of America. The majority of America has the ability to just go get a job. And when the job doesn't come or the job, like, like Michael Huggins story, the job doesn't pay what you thought. The, 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 the degree you got doesn't match up with your earnings at your job, right? Then you have to get a more specialized degree. You have to get a more, uh, become specialized in a certain trade. You have to go get an advanced degree um, so that you can make more money. Or you have to work in the company and stick with that company for a very long time to get promoted over time, climb the ladder to make more money, right? Just to make even like a six figure salary, a seven, a, a, a multiple six figure, 150 grand a year, right? Like, like my sister-in-law has been in her field for, for 30 years, um, 30 full years. And, and she is good. She's one of the best at this field. And she's working for major, major billion dollar company right? In the, in the, in a medical field and she's making a hundred and whatever, I don't know what her salary is exactly, but it's, it's, it's 150, right? So if you think about our choices and the choices with the prospects that you're coming across, they're very few. They're so limited. Like we're not going to get, you know, we're not going to create an app tomorrow, right? We're not going to, we're not going to come up with some new software. We're not going to create some company that is gonna, you know, be the next Ford. I, I don't, you know, most of us are not, right? And not only us, we have already come to that term. <laughs> I'm talking about most of the people you're talking to. So what freaking choice do they have, right? They know that it's real estate. Why real estate? Can we go over this? Real estate is because it's where the majority of the wealthy made and hold their money on both, okay? So it's the biggest piece of the pie on the chart. When we're throwing darts, the odds of us getting successful and wealthy are through real estate, not all those other places, right? So when we're having these conversations, we understand that our, our only choice is to get a job, right? Get more education or go this route, right? So we can share with them the opportunity that this route has. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> When, when you start to, when most people think about real estate, they think about, like, let's, let's think about this, you guys. When you're having co intelligent conversations with folks about bringing them into Renatus and why Renatus is so valuable, fix and flip and wholesaling and, you know, doing a couple deals strategies are, are simply a money-making activity. They're, they're an ordinary income thing that anybody can do. Uh, you can read a book, you can watch YouTube, you can go get cheaper education, you can go to a three day boot camp and perhaps get lucky, right? And the thing is, no matter what people do, um, if they have extra money at the end of the month, only a few options are going to be there for them. They can then try to roll it into their own deal so they can make more of the money on the deal that they do in the, in the, in the real estate, right? On their next fix and flip or their next wholesale or their next little venture in real estate, right? Most people know that the only way they can buy real estate in, in a buy and hold situation is try to get a loan and put a down payment down and have credit. Maybe they can get creative and partner with someone's credit or borrow someone's money or be a money partner with their family member who has the money, right? And they, they don't have a lot of education, but they know that this is a good deal because it's in their neighborhood. Like think about these scenarios. These are it. These are the only ones. They don't even understand 
that it's possible that you can go um, even through a wholesaler or even through uh, a way to find their own deals that are, that are, that are discounted, right? And how they can creatively buy these properties um, subject to lease option, owner finance, um, multiple strategies rolled into one, right? But all of this aside, the whole point is that they're going to make money at the end of the day. And, and the money is going to be there, right? This is why we start a business, just to have extra money. But having extra money, only a few things are going to happen. You've got this extra money that's going to sit in your account. You're going to pay off some debt, right? And once you become a little more debt-free, then the money just sits there, right? So what do you got to do? Then you have to, um, you, you might go on vacation. You might upgrade your house, upgrade your car, buy liabilities, right? Naturally, that's what the thing is going to do because you're going to be having this, even if it's, like somebody who lives paycheck to paycheck and then they, um, and then they make an extra 10 grand. I mean, they're going to go on vacation. They're, they're, they don't, they don't have the skill set, the mindset or the, or the resources to reinvest it. Right? So the wealthy get educated in the things, in the vehicles that they use to accelerate debt. I mean, accelerate income to accept, to put their money to work. They're not, they're not making an extra 10 grand a month on selling education or, um, having a side hustle or getting a business or, you know, making something, whatever it is that they're doing in addition to their regular life, right? That wealthy don't just wake up and all of a sudden have a big business that grows. They have something that's making them money, paying the bills, just like all of us. Then they go ahead and they have this business they've been working on and they start to get gains from it. But that's just money coming in. They have to learn to invest it. So they either have a friend that has a tip on stocks or can invest it in the stock market or put it into a mutual fund or put it into a hedge fund or right or they have to have a tool so what the wealthy learned is how to invest in real estate long term and that's what you guys have that's what we have and that's what you can share with people to have so even if somebody does self educate and does self teach and gets a job a deal done in this market where's the money going to go how will the money grow and multiply without them so they can go back and do another flip and then have even more money to put into a long-term uh, uh, a long-term strategy where they could buy a property and use velocity banking to pay it down and the chunking method. They could take the 10 grand that they make and put it towards their mortgage. But then they're like, oh, I just sold this house and made it 10 grand or 20 grand and now I got to go throw it at my mortgage. I don't realize, I don't see the the tangible money. I don't see it. It's gone to the back end of my mortgage. And what I've saved a couple of years. That doesn't make sense to me. Right. But when they see it and learn it and they hear it from you, they start to conceptualize what's possible. Right. This is wealth creation in a, in a fast track. Right. This is the, the, the true strength of Renatus. The true value of Renatus is that, um, People can have the opportunity to learn to invest their own money to make multiple, multiple um, double digit returns on their investment in a shorter period of time, all the while decreasing liability, decreasing debt, increasing equity, therefore having more opportunity to leverage, increasing credit, leveraging relationships so they can have even multiple credit partners multiple money partners, and then buy multiple assets and repeat the process. And so they can exponentially on a linear um, scale can go ahead and create what retirement much faster, not just one direct line of their own, one house, buy another house and pay that house down, right? Over time, over 30 years with a renter in there, maybe make an extra payment a month. And, and that's all they know, right? And, and so the um the opportunity is is far greater when you've got this type of resource to accelerate wealth um than most people can can ever see but if we are not capable of seeing that and we haven't watched some of the classes that are around that and we haven't experienced some of these things that um right because we're new to the, to the system or we're new to real estate, even though we've been around for a little while, we're just getting our traction. We're just getting started when life has gotten in the way, all those things we can, we have to be able to communicate this and to, 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 um, to share this information with the folks that can't see the bigger picture, right? That they don't, they don't, they don't see the point of Renatus because 
we're a fix and flip company. We're, we're not, we're not a fix and flip company, right? That's a strategy we have to teach and we have to offer, but it's not, it's, it's the least valuable in all of our education, in all of our resources. It's the least valuable, right? Not the most valuable. Even rehabbing and land development, right? Those are, those are businesses. Those are opportunities for people to have a, a business in that field. Um, like, like people, I don't know. We have a tendency to cut on Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey has, is really a genius, right? And, and, and I don't, he does not teach people to save themselves to wealth. That's not what he does. What he does teach people to do is eliminate debt, right? And he knows, he doesn't spend much time on this, but he knows that when you eliminate debt, you build credit. I mean, it's just a fact. You, you eliminate some of your credit card debt and get it below a third, and every, every month it's going to improve your credit score, right? Um, when you pay off a, a long-term loan, your credit score goes up, right? When you, um, increase, when you decrease debt, and decrease liability and and you are have more debt when you have more cash to debt ratios when you have more cash at the end of the month you are more attractive we've all gone through this in our in our velocity banking and that is that is some of the bigger picture is once you get to a point where you spend time in the essentials while you're studying the longer term strategies in the AIT you're focusing on the essentials and in the, in the essentials, you are saving more of the money you're making, you're increasing your credit, you're decreasing debt, you're setting up retirement accounts so that you can then learn to invest your extra money into long-term real estate goals, such as multifamily, single family, commercial, buy and hold, buying with lease options or um, selling with lease options, right? So you can buy strategies with hard money refinance out of the hard money and private money so you own it free and clear, right? Then you have equity in the property, then you can get a line of credit against it and go repeat the process, right? The last, the, the last triplex I bought, the last duplex I bought, uh, the other triplex I just, I bought a couple of years ago, um, and all of these properties over the, and I'm missing one, a, a fourplex that I bought, that I own, they, they were all done with no money of my own, with all private money from someone I met in the community and with a hard money loan. Then I fixed them up, I increased the rents, I re-rented them out, I, I grew the, the value of the property, and then I refinanced it in my own name based on my credit that I didn't have 10 years ago, right? Even five years ago, zero credit. And um, then I went ahead and refinanced the whole thing at 75 cents on the dollar. So I was able to pay off both the loans and have no money into the deal. And I cash flow these properties and one of them cash flows 1400 a month. Another one cash flows 1100 a month. Another one cash flows like, I don't even know, like 1500 a month um, over my new loan. And I have no money in them and I own them and they have an, a, a ton of equity, right? And so the, uh, the idea of, of, of creating wealth is far more valuable but far less sexy than flipping a house and making 100 grand right we as marketers have to portray and have to uh, create this value through watching the education you don't have to experience it and do it but we have to understand it in order to really create the value for the people that we're trying to share with this you know no matter what someone does and that's why for us as I tie this up, finish this off, oh my God, it's 7.55. For us, for everybody on this line, do what you're doing. Whatever it is you're doing, do it. You're, you've got a job, you've, you work from home, you, you have a family that you work with, that's your job is work, creating your family and raising your family, whatever that is. Your marketing opportunity is your side hustle. Your marketing opportunity is your business, right? If you wanna work on your business, study your education. Because pretty soon what's gonna happen is you're gonna make, you're gonna become five star if you're not already. When you're five star, you're gonna make $10,000. You've got to um, 
you guys are plugging into these trainings and every day, one, you know, once a week, one or two of us are, are working on actual physical activity that helps you to, um, to do the work, not to invite people do the four money making activities. Right. So today I really, I wanted to, next week I'm going to, I'm going to do follow up. I think I'm, I'm going to use the whiteboard and stuff like that. But my point is this, is that get into this marketing and get more people to the, to the events and understand, I'm telling you, if you, in my experience and my understanding is that if you can watch some of these classes that you may you, self-directed or a class, for example, um, wealth creation, um, retiring real estate, 1030 ones. When you understand this stuff, um, the value there that you can portray to somebody else that you can um, communicate to somebody else is so, so huge for them to be able to see a bigger picture. And, and then this marketing thing that is going to, is going to create $10,000 checks for you. And when it does, you're going to have the knowledge to invest it in long-term real estate. You won't need to do a fix and flip. You have the side hustle already. You have the write-offs that you need from the marketing of Renatus. All you need now is the income from Renatus. And the income from Renatus is going to, is going to come from you actually studying the education and, and, and telling people about the education, not actually doing the education. Because ultimately, you're going to do the education, which is going to give you even more credibility, but it's not what you need to get started in the marketing your business, right? It's not. It's the ability to portray the vision and the, like, but Dane Clark is killing it. And he, and he sees, like, he used, he spent all this time being an investor, and now he spends all this time being a marketer. And he understands the value, but he, he's being able to portray the bigger picture. That's why he's so good at asking people, what's your one and three and five year goal, right? It's, it's to have these properties and to be, you know, to make money in real estate and to have long-term wealth and start to create wealth and have some, I mean, there's nothing better than having a, a, a bank statement with cash in it, right? To have a house with equity in it and to have a net worth. Like a net worth is, is far greater than flipping a house and making 10 grand. Having a, a million dollar net worth or multi-million dollars of net worth, trust me, is, 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 it wasn't the picture I had when I first started. It was make money, make money, get rid of, you know, pay off my bills, don't go file bankruptcy, you know, try to save these houses that I made my wife buy in her name and all these things, right? And as, as the dust settled, I was like, holy crap, I've got an education here that can create a ton of wealth. And in 2013, I started buying property and, and holding it and looking for longer term strategies, right? Even in 2010, when I bought my first assisted living, that was 47 units. That thing devastated me, obviously. Nah, it didn't. It, but it cost me a lot of money. And, and I wish I still had it. I mean, I wouldn't have given it up had, it, had I not had problems with it. But, um, but my point was, it was about long term strategy. And, um, Anyway, 7.59, I, don't, I didn't see any questions or anything on the, on the chat. Um, uh, next week, I'm going to dedicate this call to um, literally taking action. And I'm going to open it up to uh, any type of role playing you guys want. If you don't role play, if no one comes out, it's no big deal. I'll, I'm going to train on, on literally, um, in my opinion, just, just talking to guests uh, and, and, then, and then following up with guests on, on, on a regular thing. I mean, it's, it's important that we mix in the actual physical activity that creates a sale uh, along with these concepts of, um, of not theory, but, but like, like Michael's thing was really good yesterday on, on doing a cash flow. I mean, that's, a, that's an actual physical step that you can take, that you can physically do. He taught you how to do it so that you could, you could actually do it, right? Go home and try it. So, so I want to, next week will be a, a training on, on physically doing something that you can use all Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of that week to create a sale. All right. Hi, Bill. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Bill, yeah. one quick question. Hi. Uh, so have you reached your financial goals? Like, are you still buying uh, duplexes or commercial buildings? Um, so the answer, so I have not, I, you know, to be honest, um, no, my, fan, my, my financial goal are, is, um, is is well is well in the in the tens of millions of dollars of, of net worth, and and I'm I'm only in a couple million, right? So uh, probably haven't even reached two million yet. But um, I am still buying. But one of the things that I can do to create that 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 net worth as well is pay off debt. So a lot of my like I got to tell you guys, I own I own two vehicles. My wife and I. They're both paid for. One is a 2008 FJ Cruiser. 
and one is a 2011 BMW, right? Um, that is the, I, that is the, I don't have a, a brand new sports car. Um, I haven't bought a car in five years. Um, what I have bought are properties. And so, and, and then we also have paid down an extraordinary amount of, um, not, not bad debt, but just debt, just, um, recreating, we, we keep buying assets and then we, and then we pay some down. So we are working on paying down debt, uh, good debt and velocity banking and getting lines of credit. And so, so we can buy more properties or have more net worth. My, I mean, ultimately to retire, retire, um, which is one of the things that we're looking to do, um, is and really travel a little bit more and still work is to, um, create enough cash flow every month that, that, that covers not only all of our mortgage, right? But we just bought this house a couple of years ago, this bigger house. And, and my, my mortgage, our mortgage payment is almost is $4,000 a month, right? And so just on our primary residence. So uh, that, I have enough cash flow to cover that, but not everything else that we do and not live, right? I can actually have more, more than enough cash flow right now to cover, cover that if we wanted to, but we still use our business money to pay our mortgage and our bills. So, so the answer is no, I haven't reached my financial goals at all. Um, in my mind, I'm five years into this um, where I've been creating wealth. And the first five years I had to dig out of that hole. And, um, you know, really was, I had blinders on and I was, flip, I was flipping houses. Hopefully you're not coming from that type of place. And you could be, you could be retired literally, if you, if you, in my opinion, using the marketing, not doing all these risky fix and flips. Because I've lost over over $250,000 in fix and flips. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, I mean, I lost $100,000 on one fix and flip once. You guys, I've lost 15 grand on a deal, uh, 2,000 on a deal, 6,000 on a deal. Um, I can't remember. And then, I, and then I lost money on that, on that. So my point is, is that when you do fix and flips and you do some, crazy strategy. Some, I lent some money to some folks, uh, on a business transaction that I didn't get back. I'm still, I'm still, I still, I don't have a judgment of over a hundred thousand dollars from that guy on, on two different people that owe me money. Um, and, um, it's very risky. There's no risk in buying a property creatively and then paying down the mortgage, leveraging it and going out and buying a new property when you have the right tools and the right resources. And that creates wealth. It creates passive income. And this is your business. This is your, 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 your everyday side hustle, which is your marketing, which gives you the extra income you need to accelerate your, your debt reduction and being able to buy more assets. And it makes you more attractive and you can pay off bills. Uh, you know, along the way, you're going to get bills. I mean, you know, we've constantly upgraded different things and, you know, we've paid off cars and, and things like that. So anyway, um, that's, that's, Thank that's you. my goal. So yeah, Thank I'm you, still, Bill. yeah, you're welcome. I'm still buying. In fact, um, yeah, I can't, we're looking at a couple of commercial properties right now that we're looking to buy and I'm looking to buy that yacht, which I'm going to turn into a business. Um, you know, that's, that's almost a million dollar asset, um, which technically would be a liability, but I'm going to turn it into a business if we buy it. So, um, again, more money, more money going into, into assets, um, that are going to produce cash flow that will help us to retire. I mean, we, yeah. So. Awesome, you guys. I, I'm open, you guys. I'll give you my number, 760-533-3141. Tuesdays are tough for me just because I have my leadership meeting. I'm going to run to the gym. I have a roughly an hour in between now and when I got to head up to my leadership. But you can call me. Uh, see you. Yeah, see you this afternoon, Lee. Awesome. Glad you're on the call. Uh, you're welcome, Monica. Keely, you're awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely um, tell these stories, in my opinion, or get to know them a little more intimately. But anyway, you guys are awesome. Thanks for being on this call. Um, I hope it was valuable. Make it a great Tuesday. Uh, take it easy. Give me a call if you need me. Shoot me a text. And uh, I appreciate every one of you uh, for being on this call. It means a lot to me. How's your brother? Cool, man. Have a great night or have a great day, everybody. Make it awesome. Take advantage of what you got. We do it. We do it.